What's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to be doing something that a lot of you have asked for. Now, this in no way is a cheap car, but it's definitely more affordable than some of the other cars that I've been reviewing. So today I'm hanging out with this thing, which is the 2015 CLA 45 AMG. Never driven one before, but yeah, let's have some fun with it. So what is this that I am driving right now? Well, the CLA 45 is Mercedes-Benz kind of like baby performance car. And I say that very lightly because the numbers this thing has and the performance stats it puts out are nothing to joke with. 355 horsepower, 332 pound-feet of torque. Um, and in 2017, they did a facelift and they took the horsepower to 375. Couple that up with the fact the car is only 3,400 pounds. Dual clutch transmission, which at this price point is pretty insane. It's an all wheel drive car. So you mix all that together, you have a pretty awesome little car. And I mean little, I am on the taller side. I stand right at about six foot five and it's definitely a little tight in here, a little tighter than I'd want it to be. Uh, I have the seat all the way down, all the way back. My head is barely clearing the roof. And this pillar right here ends up being right in my field of view. When I'm trying to look to my left to see if cars are coming or anything like that, I end up staring right at this thing. So I have to kind of lean forward a little bit. Um, however, that's not really an issue for a majority of the population. I think if you're under six foot, you'll fit very comfortably in this car. These things start right at $49,000. Um, but with the right options, and everything you're going to go up to probably about 60, 65. However, in the used market, you can get a slightly used car um, for below to mid 30s. So um, definitely an affordable car. It has a surprising amount of power. Uh, you're not expecting such a small motor to deliver that kind of pull, but shit. So the car has this little mode selector down by the gear select and you have comfort, sport, and M, which I'm not sure, I'm gonna assume stands for manual, but it may be something else. Um, I currently have it in sport. It livens up a little bit, it holds its shifts a little bit longer. You definitely feel all 332 pounds of torque at a very low rpm it's not like you have to be super high up in the power band and that's the beauty of turbos they they kind of eliminate that you know my gt3 has pretty much no power until you're up at four or five thousand rpm this thing has power pretty much from when you start pushing the pedal down that's the nice thing about turbos and i know a lot of people will say you know naturally aspirated it's way more fun to drive and i i would agree but turbos and electric assist are definitely the way of the future That was awkward. <laughs> Just like, what up? Please don't put All that right, in this there. I'm putting that in there for sure. But this car being as small as it is, Houston doesn't always have the widest lanes and it doesn't always have the greatest roads. Um, and this thing's totally at home on these narrower lanes. I drove the S-Class Coupe very recently and even though it's a coupe, that car is just giant. It's like driving a boat. It's kind of nice that this thing's not so big. It's kind of a nice change. <laughs>
So real quick, I just wanna go over the interior because it's where you'll be spending most of your time. The interior build quality is excellent. The infotainment center is awesome. 2017, they added Apple CarPlay. Um, everything you could possibly want, heated seats, Bluetooth, I mean, everything you can think of in a modern day car is, is definitely built into this. You gotta remember it's a Mercedes Benz. So there's a certain level of luxury that's gonna be carried over just because it's a Mercedes Benz. Having said that, it's also an AMG. That's where I think I have a slight issue. I've driven almost everything that AMG's put out, including the current generation lineup. And I think I hold the AMG badge to a certain standard. Turbocharged V8 motors, making an insane sound, awesome transmissions, and just kind of over the top. This car has that AMG badge on it, but it, it doesn't give me that AMG feeling. And I, I don't mean it in a bad way, but I also don't entirely love it. The sound that comes out of this thing just doesn't do it for me. I'm sure you can put an exhaust on it, but it just doesn't, it doesn't have that same AMG sound that I'm looking for. The transmission, while it is a dual clutch, isn't the greatest dual clutch I've driven. I really wish in sport mode it would hold its shifts a little bit longer. Um, and I really wish it would drop a gear faster for me. There's been a couple times today that I've been trying to go around somebody and you know I give it probably 40, 50% throttle and it just doesn't downshift, it just holds the current gear. And it just doesn't have any power because I'm so high up in the gears. Um, but that's nothing that you can't fix with the paddles. And while I'm on the subject of the paddles, they're not bad, but I think I've been spoiled by the Ferrari and the Porsche. Um, those are more like mechanical switches. When you click one, you, you feel it click. These paddles are more just like electronic buttons. Don't really get that feeling that you're shifting a gear. It just kind of feels like you're you know, clicking an Xbox trigger. Handling is surprisingly good. Steering, I'm not a huge fan of. Um, it is electronic steering and it just feels very disconnected. If it wasn't for the car going the direction that I'm turning the wheel, I really wouldn't know how far the wheels are turned. You really just don't have any connection to the road through the steering wheel. Um, and that's something I really look for because I really enjoy cars that give you that kind of driver's experience. And this is more separated. Having said all of that, this car is $49,000 brand new. I'm being a little harsh on it because I'm comparing it directly to this car's older brother, which is a $70,000 car or a $100,000 car. Um, you know, Ferraris, Porsche, stuff like that. For the money, this car is incredible. Would I buy one? Probably not. If I was in the market for a car of this price, I'd probably go with a coupe. Um, if I had to go with the four-door sedan, I'd probably go with the Audi S3. I was able to drive that a couple weeks ago and it directly competes with this car. I think I like the way that thing drives a little bit more than this. It's a little bit more connected to the road in my opinion. But if you're in the market for this car or a car on this level, should this be a very strong consideration for you guys? Yes, there's some people that this car is going to be perfect for. If you're really looking for a sporty experience, but you still want that luxurious interior and you don't want to go over fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, I don't really think it gets much better than this. It is a spectacular car and with that i'm gonna wrap up this review so if you enjoyed this video hit the like button share subscribe if you're in the market to buy one of these i hope you learned something about this car or maybe i helped you form an opinion on this car big big shout out to the owner of this car daniel hong he's a good friend of mine he also has a youtube channel at hong fit go check him out and i will catch you guys in the next one